Hello there folks. This quick short video is going to describe how to take uh, Modbus 485 comms that uh, say for instance you have some banner wireless products and you're talking to those over the 485 comms and you might happen to implement a wireless gateway that speaks Modbus TCP instead and so you'd like to take your tags that are currently linked to the Modbus 485 device and remap them to the Modbus TCP device. So if you look at my screen here, I'm in Crimson 3.0, I'm using a, a graphite HMI, but you can use any of the Redline HMIs to do this. And over here on the left, you'll see that I've got my 485 port currently selected as a Modbus Master. I've chosen the Universal Master for the driver. You can always hit the pick button right here, select the Modbus category for the manufacturer, and choose Universal Master, because I'm using that to talk directly to the uh, wireless gateway. Keep in mind that the uh, gateway um, for banner uh, is always set up as a default is 19200 is the baud rate. All the rest of the settings are set uh, the same. Right underneath that driver over here on the left, if you click there, normally that would be named PLC3. I've already got it set up here as DX80 gateway because that's what they call their products is the DX80 line of products. And you notice here the default is drop number one. Now if I go to the left side and click on data tags down below here, you're going to see I already have a folder of tags here called Gateway. And as I click on these, you can see right here, it lists that actual device, DX80 Gateway, which is that device right there. I've currently I got all these tags mapped to the particular gateway and so forth. And what I want to do in this example is take them and migrate their linking to the 485 based communications more to a Modbus TCP. So over here on the left, I'll click on the communication section. And I'm going to click on the word network over here because I want to turn on the Ethernet port on my Redline device. So when I click on network right here in the Ethernet 1 tab where it says port mode disabled, hit the pull down here. And for this example, I'll choose manual configuration. Taking notice that you'll see that the uh, default address is 192.168.1.20. Then if I go to protocol number one here, and on protocol number one, if I hit the pick button right here, that brings up once again the listing of the drivers available. Take your little slider bar and slide on down to eventually the word Modbus. So click on Modbus here and we're going to set up the HMI to be the master to talk to the uh, um, wireless gateway which is going to be on Modbus TCP. So I'll choose master here and click OK. And then over here on the left where it says PLC3, when you click on that, that's going to be the IP address, or that's going to be the device on the Ethernet connection. So you want to set up the IP address here to make sure that's correct. And uh, most of the banner wireless uh, would be, the default would be 192.168.1.1, so I'll change that there. Don't forget, folks, whenever you hit the keyboard, remember to hit the Enter key or Tab to make sure that particular field sticks. But then over here on the left, where it says PLC3, uh, if I just click on that a few times, you'll see I get a box there. Or you can uh, right-click and go down to the, well, I did it wrong. You can right-click and go down to Rename, and that'll also give you access to change the name. So I'm going to rename this one DX80 underscore, underscore gateway. Then I'll do underscore little x. So notice that the name is just slightly different than this one here, just because I got the suffix there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to the DX80 gateway and I'll click on the RS45 COM port, the header right above that's the driver selector. And I'm going to click the clear port settings down here. Now folks, I want you to take note. Look down here in the screen. Right here, there's a little section right here that says errors. When I click the clear port setting, we should have a bunch of errors. Let's see what happens here. Boom. And you can see right down here, it actually brings up the errors. So if I take my mouse down here to errors and double click on this, it actually takes me where the, the errors are listed. If you ever want to see a listing of the errors, you can always hit this little button right here, search results, and that'll bring up a table of each individual one that's causing the error. And the problem here is that the tag was linked to a DX80 gateway device, but we've deleted that. <clears throat> so what we need to do is go back to communications on the left. Now that we've deleted that, device under the RS-45 COM port, simply come down here to where the DX80 gateway is and that little suffix that I gave it, underscore X, click on the little uh, the name there to rename it, go to the end, 
delete the underscore X, and then when you hit enter, watch what happens when I hit enter. You see the little errors down here? Watch what happens when I hit enter. Here we go. Boom. You can see that the errors down below here got cleared up, and if I go back to data tags on the left, all of a sudden all the, these tags are now relinked back to that same device. However, it is now talking to it over the Ethernet port versus the 485 port. So that's how you can take a device that communicates over 232 or 45, and if we have a driver for it on Ethernet, you can migrate the tags directly over to the Ethernet communications. The last thing I always like to recommend students do is uh, go to the file pull down menu and go to the word utilities and click on the recompile database. I always like to do that to rebuild my Crimson database to make sure things correct prior to downloading to my Redline HMI or data station or productivity station product, whatever you might have from us. Anyway, I hope that answers your questions. If you got any uh, questions, please let me know. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.